New Ravens OC Todd Monken was asked about working with Lamar. Also, what would happen if he didn't work with Lamar due to the contract quagmire we're currently in? Here's what he said. Take a listen. How difficult will it be uh, Lamar holds out, comes the first week of the season? You know, how far behind will he be with your install? Oh, I'm sure he'll be behind, but um, it's still just football. I mean, I think sometimes we make this out to be way too much, you know. I mean, it's just football. It's been playing. I don't know when he started, maybe at five years old with the Purple Pounders or something in Miami or something. I mean, it's just football. Like, we'll cater to what he knows and play. Mm. Sure. Coach, I'll be honest with you. If you came on and said that as part of your analysis, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just football. What do you think, Coach? It's just football. Nick, your reaction. Well, I mean, I think it's a terrible answer. And I, the listen, the, he's not he's not a head coach, and he's not going to be given a lot of interviews, and it's not. So I'm not going to kill the guy for it. I think it's a bad answer, but I also think it's indicative of the terrible spot the Ravens have put themselves in. This is there is a reason why quarterbacks do not get franchise tagged. Three quarterbacks ever have played under the franchise tag. You know what they all had in common? None of them were first-round picks. None of them were anything close to a league MVP at that point in time. And none of their teams really deeply, fully believed in them. Drew Brees played under the franchise tag for the Chargers, who then got rid of him. He was a second-round pick. Kirk Cousins played under the franchise tag twice. He was a fourth-round pick. Dak Prescott played under the franchise tag for a full season, was a fourth-round pick. Now you have Lamar, a first-round pick, a league MVP, and the team's like, no, we'll just franchise tag him. It doesn't happen at this position, and one of the reasons I would imagine, Coach, is even if you're not installing a totally new offense, you need your quarterback there for hopefully OTAs, certainly training camp. And so people can understand this where I give it to you. If they franchise tag him, he can sign it days before, if he ever signs it, days before the season starts, and there's right. no penalty. So I know on sports TV everywhere they're going to say Lamar Jackson's holdout. There is no holdout because he's not under contract. He would just be not signing it. And if you're trying to install a new offense, potentially with new weapons, and Lamar shows up September 9th, it's like, okay, I'll oh, take my real, 45 not million. Not like the NFL calendar. No, I'm talking the about real season. He, he, they, they hand it to him. He signs it whenever he wants. It's a brutal spot for the Ravens if he does sign it because he can wait until days before the season starts. Yeah, that'd be worst case scenario. And you could say it's it's just football. Remember, Tom Brady goes to Tampa Bay and is trying to learn a new system, right. and and he's struggling. And he was there mm -hmm. yep. for a decent amount of time. So now you're talking about a system that's that's very different than what Greg Roman did. They're talking about tempo and no huddle and and all these different things. Where where Greg Roman's system was more deliberate and they they controlled time of possession. And so so that's all that's all a transition that that he's going to have to go through. And, and he hasn't coached anybody like Lamar. He's coached Jameis Winston when he was a coordinator in Tampa, and then it was Baker Mayfield in Cleveland, and then Stetson Bennett. So he's got to get used to having an athlete like that and really figuring out what works in his system for him. It, it's a it's a it's a horrible situation to be in if if that's how it turns out where he comes in that late for both Lamar and and for the Ravens. If Lamar's plan is to do that. If he's thinking, if they're going to franchise me, I'm just going to wait till right before the season to sign, then Lamar should just ask for a trade right now. He should just say, look, we've been negotiating for a year and a half. We are miles apart. Trade me. Just trade me. That would enable him to get a little bit of uh, control of the situation. Right now, they have all the control. I know he can sit, not sign it, and that's a little bit of control, but they essentially control the situation. If he says, just trade me, we can't come to an agreement, then they either have to improve their offer significantly or trade him. Everybody will know now Lamar wants out. So I, I think that's what he should do because if he were to come back right before the season, when he comes back, Coach, he needs to play well. Like, there are already questions about him because of the way he plays, because he's not that big for a running quarterback, because he's been hurt the last two years. Like, he can't come in and afford to not know what the heck he's doing and look bad in the offense. So I think he should say, look, trade me if indeed he's thinking about doing this. Well, the exerting control, depending on how that injury really played out the last season, the season before, and that's where the control can come into play. When, you, when you're dinged up a little bit, you can make a decision – do I wait till I'm 100% healthy, or do I come back and, and play through it? And, and when you've got this kind of money on the line, 
You wait till you're 100% healthy, and that's another way to exert control. But theoretically, I don't think he would do this, but just theoretically, he, he signs the franchise tag. Maybe, let's say it's a, the exclusive tag. Yeah. And in the first play of the game, he gets hit. And you're like, you know what, not 100%. And then sits for the you, it's of like, course. Oh, it's like a quiet quitting. Of like, course. Look, I, I had a guy one time who had a back injury the week before the season, and then his contract got signed and the injury disappeared. Oh. And it was one of those things where everybody knew what the back injury right. was, but that was real leverage that, that they have. And, and, and you never want to get into that. And you never want to question the, uh, an athlete's injury or not injury, but that part of the, the world exists. This is headed in a terrible direction. And like any divorce, if you're going to ultimately get divorced, the earlier you admit it and rip the Band-Aid off, the better it is for everybody. Okay. And so, I don't know. Very I, personal there. Well, no, it's not. It's not like, <laughs> Are you trying to like get quiet and like look at Child the... Child is divorced. <laughs>